in ashes and turn to God, return to God with tears and fasting. The great religious traditions of the world, the great spiritual traditions of the world, all have a contemplative dimension to them. And the universal aspect of it is that we can actually share wisdom with other traditions. Learn great things about meditation through Buddhism, for instance. Some people learn great things through yoga, for instance. We don't necessarily always agree with what they describe as what's going on in terms of the ultimate end of things. We have to keep that in mind as Christians, what our church teaches. But there is wisdom that we can share. Universal in the sense that all people are really called to share in the graces of the contemplative life. I think there's a prejudice that thinks it's just for a couple of monks or nuns or some religious somewhere. But the idea is for all people to be able to access some of the graces of the contemplative life. The great scholar of world religions named Houston Smith wrote a book called The Religions of the World, identified three different aspects of religion. One of them is philosophical, one of them is practical, and one of them is devotional. Our devotion is very much to Jesus and to the gospel. So we don't necessarily share the devotional aspect of other traditions. Even though I've studied a lot about Buddhism, I'm not devoted to the Buddha like I'm devoted to Jesus. You know, I certainly don't worship any of the Hindu deities, even though I practice some yoga. Philosophy is what theology uses to express itself. And Christianity, for the most part, early on, immediately took on Greek philosophy to express itself. So Greek terms, and also like Roman customs and Roman laws. Other religions who have sought union with God have also shown different ways that that union can be achieved. And just as we reject nothing true and holy that's in those religions, so those ways are not rejected out of hand simply because they're not Christian. Rather, we can take those ways up as long as we keep the Christian conception of prayer in mind. So we can learn new ways of expressing our faith. Because we, especially in Roman Catholicism, have been very locked in kind of a monolithic way of expressing religious life and liturgy and, and philosophy and everything. So those are the things I think we could learn from interaction with other, with other religions and other cultures. And that's one of the big things that happened, that happened in the Second Vatican Council. Church started becoming a world church rather than a Roman church, rather than a European church. And it was very exciting. It's still going on. Two things. One is to recognize our dignity. Mm -hmm. This, as human beings created in the image of God, the fact that we are temples of the Spirit, it means to recognize the positive aspect of Christianity. And secondly, to really commit to the gospel of Jesus. Like the world needs it like no, no other time. Especially this idea of being servants, as individuals and as a church. God, you are the God of my rescue. You have helped me. You have